One of my mentees was struggling with sock-related job applications because they weren't sure how to tailor their resume or identify the key skills that they were missing. So they reached out to me for guidance, and I realized that many aspiring SOC analysts might actually be facing the same challenges. Which is why in today's video, I'll be walking you through a real job description for an Associate Detection and Response Analyst, aka Associate SOC Analyst from Expel. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to analyze job descriptions, spot important keywords, and identify the skill gaps so you know what to work on before applying. If this is your first time seeing my video, hello, my name is Steven, and I've been in the cybersecurity industry for nine years, focusing within the security operations domain. On this particular channel, you will find videos that touch on career guidance, SOC analyst lab walkthroughs, and projects that you can tackle to put onto your resume. So you can be in a better position to help you get started as a SOC analyst. If you are looking for a SOC analyst resume template, I will link a video down below where I walk you through the template step by step. And you'll also be able to download it for your own use. Now, with that being said, let's go through Expel's job description and break it down. The first thing that stands out about this job posting is actually how it starts. It's not your usual corporate jargon. It actually jumps straight into Nopsleds, Metasploit, PowerShell, and even reverse shells. Now, right away, this tells you something about Expel. They know what they are looking for, and they want analysts who understand the attacker tactics. Even though this is a defensive role, they expect the candidates to have some kind of offensive security knowledge, or at least an attacker mindset. Now you might be asking, how do you develop an attacker mindset if you don't have one already? I would recommend you try beginner red team labs on platforms like Try Hack Me or Hack the Box to understand how attacks work. Then read some threat reports to see what is currently being used by attackers. And finally, get familiar with the MITRE ATT&CK framework or Lockheed Cyber Kill Chain. This will help you understand the common tactics and techniques. The next couple of paragraphs, they do go into the ideal candidate's experience. But the most important phrase that I want you to pay attention here is that labs count. I've been saying this for a long time. If you're new to cybersecurity, hands-on labs are your best friend. Labs allow you to gain experience even if you don't have a SOC job yet. You can set up a home lab, do CTFs, aka capture the flags, or practice on online platforms like Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, Cyber Defenders, and many more. But here's the key. You want to document your work. If you do complete a lab, post about it on LinkedIn, GitHub, or even a blog because employees want to see that you're actively learning and applying your knowledge. So if you don't have real world experience yet, start prioritizing labs today. They absolutely count. Now let's take a look at what Expel can do for you. This section is quite important because it gives you an insight into what you should look for in a company when you're applying for SOC related roles. Expel emphasizes the following, real world threat exposure. This is a great way to gain hands-on experience and see what is out there. Mentorship from seasoned analysts, which is quite huge for career growth. And finally, a startup culture that encourages innovation. When job hunting, don't just focus on the salary. You want to look for companies that offer mentorship, growth opportunities, and a culture that encourages learning. Next, we have what you can do for Expel. Now, Expel does make it quite clear that they want someone who has a passion for cybersecurity, a willingness to learn, creativity in solving problems, and they also mention 24 by 7 shift rotations, which is pretty standard for many SOC roles. But what does that mean for you? Well, it means that you need to be someone who is curious, who actively wants to learn more about detecting attacks. You will also need to be comfortable working in a shift environment. One resource that I highly recommend is the Defer Report. They do an excellent job breaking down real-world attacks, showing exactly what an attacker did within the environment. So if you are someone who is curious and are eager to improve your detection skills, you want to ask yourself, what kind of logs or telemetry would I need? And how could I build an alert or detection rule around it? Reading these reports not only improves your investigative mindset, but it also helps you think like a threat hunter, which is an invaluable skill for any SOC analyst. Now let's talk about what you should bring with you. Breaking down the key skills that Expel is looking for. A bachelor's degree at a technical field or a compelling story. 
I personally love that Expel included a compelling story. Because I get a lot of questions about whether a degree is mandatory, and the short answer is no. But it does help. If you don't have a degree, you will need to prove your skills through projects, labs, and certifications like Security Plus. Next is flexibility and openness to challenges. SOC work is quite unpredictable, especially if you're dealing with multiple clients at a time. You will be handling a lot of false positives, real-time incidents, and new threats <laughs> constantly. And then we have inquisitive mind and noble spirit. In other words, be curious. This is something that I've been emphasizing throughout the video. You should always be asking yourself, how would I detect this attack in my environment? Next is a fundamental understanding of TCP IP and core application layer protocols. If you don't understand network, you are going to struggle and have a hard time detecting and investigating threats. So do take some time to learn how data moves through the network. Think about the OSI and TCP IP model. Get comfortable with Wireshark and analyzing PCAP files. Understand how firewalls, proxies, and DNS works. Then we have fluency with Windows operating systems and command line tools. Since many organizations do use Windows, it is a good idea to get familiar with Windows event logs and how to interpret them. Next, we have familiarity with cloud applications like Office 365 and cloud infrastructure like AWS, GCP, and Azure. Cloud security is seriously becoming a requirement for many SOC roles. If you're new to this, I would recommend you start with Microsoft tools like Office 365 and Azure, since majority of the companies use them. You should also learn KQL, which is Kusto Query Language, since it is commonly used in Microsoft's security tools. Next, we have experience with forensic tools and analysis. Now, not all SOC analysts will use forensic tools daily, but having some exposure is quite helpful. If you're new to forensics, you can look into tools like FTK Imager, Autopsy, and Volatility, to name a few. Even if you're not applying to this exact role, the breakdown that we just went over should help you better understand SOC analyst expectations and how to prepare for similar jobs in the future. The main takeaways are the following. Identify keywords and tools from job descriptions and try your best to learn as much as you possibly can. Gain hands-on experience through labs, home projects, or CTFs. Work on your soft skills, especially communication and reporting. Get familiar with cloud security because it is becoming a requirement for many SOC analyst roles. And lastly, understand that shift work is part of the job when applying for SOC related roles. If you are serious about becoming a SOC analyst, I want you to pick one skill from this video and start working on it today. I have multiple playlists that I have created to help you gain confidence in your practical skills and to help build up your portfolio. I also have a course called the MyD for SOC Analyst course, and if you're looking for a solution to help you become an amazing SOC analyst, this is it. And that is it for the video, and I hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.